In this video lecture, we will analyze a different uh, second order circuit, and uh, after that, we will uh, solve the circuit numerically. Okay, so this is a uh, RLC circuit, uh, but uh, different from the previous one, it's a series RLC circuit. Okay, so it's in a single loop, as you can see, we have resistor, inductor, and capacitor. So they all have different voltages. Of course, they can be, but in general, they are kind of independent from each other. And we have a uh, current I, which is equal in for all cases. So we know that I is equal to I L is equal to I C, it's equal to I R, and it is equal to I. Okay, and let's assume that V C is equal to V, and in this case, we will try to find the O D with respect to the capacitor voltage. Okay, so in the previous case, we tried an O D with respect to the inductor current. Now we are using capacitor voltage. Okay, good. So uh, let's write the curves of voltage law, and we know that V R. Okay, so let's clean that. Okay, so this is easy. We don't even need to keep that. Okay, so let's save some place. So VR plus VL plus VC is equal to zero. That's great. So what is VR? We know that it's equal to R times I. Okay, plus well, what is VL? We don't want to use VL, so we need to use a, its voltage with respect to other variables, such as L times DI over DT. So to keep in mind that the I current is also the current of the capacitor plus VC, VC is equal to V is equal to zero. Okay, so what is I? I is equal to, so let's write it here, I is equal to C times dV over dt, okay, because it's the capacitor voltage. So what we can write that it's equal to R times I dot, let's use this notation to say some space, plus L times, okay, so of course we have C here, L times C times I, not I, so for that, of course, now oh, I need to change that. So this is V dot, this is V double dot plus V is equal to zero. So let's reorganize it. V double dot plus R divided by L V dot plus one over LC, V is equal to zero, okay? So this is the ODE, and as I told you before, and it's true for this case also, the most important thing in a second order circuit is finding the ODE. It's my opinion, this is the main modeling part. Okay, now let's try to, okay, this is the result, as you can see, correct. Uh, we will try to put it in a standard form that we already covered in the previous video lecture. Okay, so this is the standard form, and it's obvious that V is mapped to Y. So our uh, voltages are independent or dependent variables, sorry, in the OD formulation. So we need to compute the nature frequency or resonant frequency, and we need to compute the attenuation factor or uh, so called uh, Nepper frequency. Okay, so let's start with omega naught. Okay, so omega naught is equal to 1 over square root of LC. And as you can see, this is the same uh, with respect to a uh, parallel RLC circuit. So uh, an RLC circuit parallel series means that they share the same resonant frequency, which is good. But uh, it doesn't mean that uh, alpha will be the same. Let's check it. Alpha is equal to, as you can see, it's simply R divided by 2L. This is completely different from what we computed in the previous case. Okay, let's say, check that. It's correct. It's correct. So technically, we analyzed it uh, with respect to general symbolic variables. Okay, so now let's try to solve the uh, circuit numerically once we know the, uh, the quantity values of R, L, and C. Okay, so it's given that uh, inductance is uh, 0 0.1 Henry, capacitance is equal to 0 0.1 farad, and uh, resistance value is equal to 2 divided by 5 ohm. Okay, good. So in this case, uh, omega naught is equal to square root of 1 over 0 0.1 times 0 0.1, it is equal to 10 radian per second. Okay, so this is also important. The unit of uh, omega naught is in radian per second. Okay, so it is the measure of frequency. There's also another measure of frequency which is hertz, and I'll talk about it specifically when we go to the uh, phaser uh, lectures. Okay, so what is alpha? Okay. Alpha is equal to R, it is 2 divided by 5, that's good, divided by 2 divided by 0 0.5, okay, so I think it is equal to 2, right? 
Okay, it's two. Great, it is two radian per second. Okay, okay, so I already compute that. So I have other things. Okay, so I have omega naught and I have alpha, and the next phase I need to decide on if it is overdamped, underdamped, or critical damp, and move on with the uh, related formulation. Okay, so in that context, what we need to look at this. So what is the relation between omega zero and alpha? And as you can see, omega zero, omega naught is greater than alpha, which means that this is under that system. So which means that also we need to observe some sort of oscillatory behavior at the output. Of course, based on the initial conditions, we can have uh, different graphs, but we should observe some sort of oscillations. So what are the oscillation oscillatory frequencies? Is omega d, which is the like damp nature frequency, damp resonant frequency, or just damp frequency is equal to omega zero square minus alpha square. If we compute that, it will be approximately equal to 9.8 radian per second. I think that's all we need at this phase. Okay, that's good. So once we convert everything, now we can write the general solution in a numerical format, C1 e to the power minus two T, cosine 9.8 t plus c2 e to the power minus 2 t sine 9.8 times t. Okay, sine and cosine, and uh, we give attenuation and we give oscillation. Let's check if it's correct. It should be correct. It's great, right? It's correct. Okay, that's good. So what's that? Okay, nice. So let's check. Okay, good. So how we should compute C1 and C2. Currently, we don't have enough information because we need to compute them from the initial conditions. Okay, in the first order case, we use one initial condition because it was first order and we simply used, like, if it's a voltage, we needed V0. Okay, but it's a second order system. Uh, of course, and it's for a second order ODE, in order to solve uh, the response, we need to find two initial conditions. Okay, and it is equal to V dot zero. So which means that the derivative of the voltage. So how we can compute that? Okay, so in that respect, we may, depending on the problem, need to analyze the circuit. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, that's good. So it's given that uh, at t is equal to zero, t is equal to zero, the voltage of the capacitor is equal to 10 volts, okay? So other NR storage element, which is the like uh, the core element, and we know that inductor current is the main state associated to current. It's given that current of the inductor is equal to zero amps. Okay, why it's important? We want V dot zero. Okay, but we don't directly want the current of the inductor at t is equal to zero. But we need to use this to compute V dot zero. So what is V dot zero? We know that. IC is equal to C times DVC over DT, right? Okay, uh, and when uh, technically T is equal to zero, T is equal to zero, uh, what we have, we have inductor current, we know that I is equal to zero. In that respect, we also know that V dot zero is equal to zero. Okay, that's great. Okay, so so we I know, uh, two initial conditions. Now I can proceed with the formulation, okay? So let's look at here. So I know this and I know that, and I need to compute C1 and C2. So in general, computing C1 is very easy. You will see that V0 is equal to C1, e to power zero is equal to one, okay? Cosine zero is equal to one, okay? The good thing is sine zero is equal to zero, so it is zero, it should be equal to 10. So C1 is equal to 10. That's great, okay? That's great news, we easily computed the C1. So, uh, but we need to compute V dot zero, which is a little bit tricky, we will see that. Okay, so I need to take derivative of the whole expression. Okay, that's great. So it is equal to C1, okay? So I need to uh, take derivative of this part. Okay, so I need to use like uh, classical uh, multiple formula uh, from the calculus and then equate t to zero. Okay, so if I take the derivative of the first expression, it is equal to minus two times e to power minus two t, okay, times cosine t, okay, 
if I put 0, this will be is equal to 1, this will be equal to 1, so it should be equal to minus 2. Okay, very good. That's great, so even let's change the color, it's minus 2 plus. So now I need to take the derivative of cosine. When I take the derivative of cosine, it will be sine, so e to the power minus 2 sine, something t, and it's the frequency, and when t is equal to 0, sine will be equal to 0, so good thing is that will be equal to 0, so I don't need to use it. Okay, good. So it is simply minus 2 c1 plus. Okay, so let's see two. So if I the derivative of the exponential term, sine will be stay in place. I know that uh, sine 0 is equal to 0, so it's just 0 plus, so I don't need to do that, so it's 0 plus, okay. Now I need to take the derivative with respect to the sine, okay. So e to the power minus 2t times cosine 9.8t, and when t is equal to 0, this goes to 1, this goes to 1, so it just goes to c2. Okay, good. That's nice, and this is equal to 0. Okay, I think that's great. Okay, no. Okay, I made a mistake, sorry for that. Very good, sorry guys. Okay, so, so first of all, let's uh, rewind. So if I it with respect to e to the power minus 2, sine will be stay place, so it will be 0, no problem. Okay, then I need to take the with respect to other parameters. So it is e to, e to the power minus 2t sine, not sine, of course, it should be. Okay, so let's check that. Cosine 9.8t times, of course, 9.8. Okay, now t is going to be 0. So this is t, this goes to 1, this goes to 1. So v dot 0 is equal to 0, it is equal to minus 2c1 plus 9.8c2. Okay, that's, I think, uh, very good. So what we need to do is, so 9.8 8c2 is equal to approximately uh, to c1, so c2 is equal to 2 times, okay, what is c1? It is 10 divided by 9.8. I think this is approximately 2, that's just fine, okay, especially for uh, electron point of field. So I compute c2, I compute c1, and this should be the result. As you can see, my expression is like 10 times e to the power minus 2 cosine 9.8t plus 2 e to the power minus 2 sine 9.8t volts. Okay, this is how you should proceed when solving and analyzing a second order circuit when there is no input to the system such as voltage source or current.